Hello again. The video you're about to watch is part of my perfect steak journey and I really hope you can take away and apply some of the tips and techniques it covers. I filmed it back when I wrote the first edition of How to Cook the Perfect Steak and since then I've been constantly refining the system. If you go on to watch the Masterclass series you'll see just how much it's evolved. Having said that, I'm really proud of this video. It introduces some new techniques which you can apply right away to improve your skill at the grill. I really hope you enjoy it. Hello, my name's Bill, and today I'm going to show you how to cook the perfect steak. Now, you've probably been cooking steak for years and no doubt you know a thing or two about how to cook steak, but for the next 10 minutes or so, I'm going to ask you to put aside everything that you've learnt and open yourself up to some new ideas and information. At this point, can I just pause and let you in on a little secret? The secret is this, that if you can master this, if you can learn to cook steak really well, perfectly in fact, you are going to receive more admiration, more adulation from your family, your friends, and trust me on this one, even from your kids than you ever imagined. This is superhuman stuff and today I'm going to show you some of the very best tips and tricks. Okay, before we get started we need to get prepared and I'm going to go through a checklist of what you'll need to cook the perfect steak. First off, we're going to need some steak and I'm not talking about any old steak here I'm talking about the really good stuff. This is what we're talking about when we're talking about great tasting beef. These black Angus have been on this pasture here now for about a year and at 500 kilos they're almost ready to go to market. There's quite a difference between beef that's been finished on prime pasture like these guys and beef that's been finished in a feedlot and let me show you what I mean by that. So what we're working with here today is Scotch fillet of prime Angus. You can just see some marbling starting in this meat. Another thing, always make sure that you've just taken your steak out of the fridge well ahead of time so it's at room temperature. This will ensure that it cooks through nice and evenly. Before we get started, I want to run through each of the tools on this table because everything here has a purpose. I suggest you print off your free perfect steak preparation checklist and keep it handy. First off, we have our oil. Now there's a real science to choosing the right oil and this is where a lot of problems occur when grilling steak. Because we're grilling at very high heat, we need an oil with a really high smoke point. Olive oil reaches its smoke point at around about 380 degrees Fahrenheit which is when it starts to burn and change flavour and we don't want that. Because we're cooking at 400 degrees Fahrenheit we need to choose an oil with a much higher smoke point and my oil of choice is grapeseed oil. Today we'll be cooking on a Weber barbecue and we want to be cooking on the bar grills not on the flat plate. And that brings me to this little gadget here, a grill temperature thermometer. We just put it down smack bang on the grill and when we get up to the right temperature we're ready to go. Now you probably haven't seen one of these before. It's a rack for resting the steak and I'll show you how it works shortly. Next we've got our salt and there's a few important things we need to say about salt. First off I recommend against seasoning the steak before you cook it. Now I know this is something which a lot of people like to do. They like to give the steak a good sprinkle of salt on both sides and I still recommend using salt to get that salty flavour into the meat but I'm going to show you a different technique to achieve that today so you still get that salty beautiful flavour into your meat. Okay so we're just about ready to go. Let's light the barbie and get things started. Okay, so you can see our grill temperature is up to 400 degrees Fahrenheit 
or 200 degrees centigrade and we're ready to start cooking. So let's just summarize before we start. Today we're cooking our one inch steaks to a medium rare. We've got our grill temperature as close to 200 as we can get it and we're cooking our steaks for seven minutes. So let's get started. Okay, so the first thing we need to do before we start to cook the steak is we need to dry it off with some paper towel. If you've got that juice on the steak, it won't cook properly, it'll baste. So dry both sides of the steak off. Next, we need to baste it with our grapeseed oil. Don't go crazy here. Just use a little bit of grapeseed oil on both sides. I like to go around the edges as well, all the way around. Now push the timer and let's go. The first thing you'll notice is I've put the steaks on at a 45 degree angle to the grill or 10 o'clock. Straight away we need to push them down and really get some excellent contact with the grill. I like to think of this as branding the steak. At this point, we can now put our butter on and salt mix to melt. We can also put our steak warmer on, ready to get warming. Next, we're going to turn after two minutes. So, when we're cooking the perfect steak, what we're doing here is we're using what I call the three flip method. And you know very well yourself that the less you turn the steak, the better. So we try and minimize that by turning three times. This is turn one, we're gonna flip it 45 degrees, that's turn two, and then we're gonna turn it over, and that's turn three. Three flips only. We're coming up for our first flip at two minutes. We're flipping them at 45 degrees. Again, a good press down. Now you'll note what I did there was absolutely critical. This is why I say you don't need tongs. Because if you turn and pick up the steak with tongs, what you do is you tend to leave those bar marks and that crust on the grill. And really where you want them is on the plate because not only do they look great, but that's where the flavor is. So a really good metal spatula to get under and lift the steak off the grill. That is critical. Taking this butter mix off, it's ready to go now. Up to our three minute mark for our third and final flip. Watch me turn it and get right under the steak so I get those bar marks. There you go, look at those beautiful bar marks. It just looks so amazing. This is the point where I begin the basting and getting the salt flavor through it. Because this side is our presentation side and it's not going to be going back down on the grill again, we can now baste it with our salt and butter mix. This just makes it shine up and look really amazing. Now, I know this may not be so good for the arteries with all this butter, but man, it just tastes fantastic and gives us that really incredible depth of flavour. See how that salt mix is just melting in through all the cracks and crevices in the meat. Okay, so we're just about coming up. We've got 15 seconds left of cooking time. I lift off our warmer now, sit it on a plate because this is where we're going to rest our steaks when the time's right. This is the exciting bit, we're almost ready to take the steaks off and there's our time. Let's lift them off and let's carefully sit them in the warmer. Turn it round. Nice deep scrape. And there we go. We're now going to rest these steaks for three minutes and just let those juices Go back through the meat and get all that beautiful tenderness. Let the muscle relax. Okay, so here we go. Let's cut this steak and see what sort of a job we've done. Look at that. Beautiful crust on the outside, melting and pink on the inside. Absolutely perfect steak. So, there you have it. I really hope you've enjoyed this short presentation 
on how to cook the perfect steak. If you'd like more information, you can download my ebook which covers everything that we've spoken about today on it in much more detail. Now, I want you to go out and amaze your friends and your family with your new skills. Thank you so much for watching.